Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today is new guitar day and let me tell you this is only like a, a quarter of what I bought. But I figure you guys really don't want to watch me unbox 20 guitars in the same episode, do ya? So we're gonna split this up. Here are five of the brand new Epiphones that I bought to review. I released the first video yesterday, where's the SG Classic, and that thing's gotten some pretty good views, and yeah, that thing had some fret issues. You'll actually see that one get unboxed in a separate video. So it's a box within a box. And I'm just gonna go ahead and spoil the surprise for you guys that it's actually going to be Another box within this box. I love that they triple box these things. And they add a bunch of padding. So technically this is actually gonna be a 15 unboxing episode. Let's go ahead and get this thing out. Oh, curse these tiny ceilings. I need to get a taller room. What is that even doing in there? <laughs> okay, maybe it is the top I see now. I'm only used to seeing that with guitars that have cases. Yeah, you're gonna see a lot of this box, but I think this is probably gonna be one of the more popular reviews of these guitars that I do, because it's a Les Paul, and a lot of people look to me as a Les Paul expert, so they really wanted to get my opinions on this thing. And I'll be honest, I'm looking forward to doing this one. This is the Les Paul Standard 50s, I believe. Wow, this thing, it's chunky. It definitely has quite a bit of weight to it. Um, it, it still looks like an Epiphone. These things looked pretty darn good in the NAM footage, and that's part of the reason why I don't want to go to NAM, because I like just being a regular Joe that just looks at all the lore and stuff that's posted online. And kind of fill in some of the blanks with my own imagination, because I usually plan to buy most of them anyways for full review and documentation, because, I mean, I just find that fun. So, just a quick rundown here. Um... It's got a pretty chunky neck for an Epiphone. I guess it is kind of similar to the Gibson variant, but it doesn't feel like it's quite as rounded. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say a little bit unimpressed. It looks like we've already got some pretty deep scratches right there on the finish. So that's a little bit of a letdown, but apparently high frets have been common. So let's check this one real quick. Okay, so that one actually seems good, but the action is way too high. The neck needs a little bit of straightening out, but I almost think that the nut is just a little bit too high on that. So not super impressed with this on first impressions, but who knows, maybe I'll plug it in and it'll sound amazing. So now let's move on to this one. You guys gotta let me know in the comments section which ones of these that you wanna see first. Anything that was purchased through my new Guitar Day program is definitely going to get priority. And I think there's like five or six guitars left for that. Maybe a, a little bit more, but they're not all Epiphones either. There's gonna be some Fender guitars. There's some Gibsons. There's a outlandishly expensive one that you guys will just have to, have to wait for that. Let's get this guy open. Huh. It's curious how the pack jobs vary. They must have multiple people packing these things. So that one actually has a little spacer instead of that top one that kind of secures it to the edge. That way they don't technically have to have anything in there. That's a nice little feature. Makes it hard to get out though. Oh, I see now. I never thought about that before. So normally, kind of as I was talking about earlier, you can put that over the top like this for like a guitar that has a case, but you can also use it as a, a cushion. Interesting, now you know. Now this one. You know, I'll be honest, I am more excited to open this one than I was that 50 standard. Because the 50 standard, it's one of the inspired by Gibson ones. And having experience with the true Gibson version, it's always gonna be a slight letdown in aesthetics. But this one, I think is gonna be the number one from the NAMM show and the Epiphone lineup as far as color goes. I'm really looking forward to opening this. Come on. Oh, 
Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh man. Just take that in for a minute. We don't even have it out of the cheesecloth yet. This is the Les Paul Classic in that faded finish. I think they're calling it worn. And I'm a big fan of that worn finish. So let's see this beauty in the flesh. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to reviewing this. You know, I am super pumped that they brought this to the Epiphone lineup because that means there's hope that there will be a Purple Burst Gibson next year, potentially. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not digging this worn finish as much on the Les Paul. I would rather this kind of be a semi-gloss finish or to at least have that wood grain filled in because I think it takes away from the gorgeous Purple Burst finish, but this is another pretty solid guitar. It's got that kind of slim neck profile. I'm digging the wood grain look on the back though, because it's black. So maybe they could have done a grain filled gloss top on these or offer that in the future, but leave the back this worn finish. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm probably gonna do this review next because this thing is just gorgeous, but the setups on all these are just garbage. Got some high frets. Well, maybe I'm not looking forward to reviewing this one because, I mean, the bridge is already pretty high up. You don't really want your action any higher, so that means it comes down to our frets, so. <sighs> Just having a good day. Well, let's see if this guy's any better. I just realized I've been opening these wrong. I have to use a lot more tape to feel secure when shipping those things. I forgot I need to be opening them like this. I still have to use a bunch of tape, but that's a little bit better for me. This is one of the higher end Epiphones, but I guess so is that 50 standard. <laughs> But we reviewed the lowest end modern SG. Now we're gonna do the highest end modern SG. So I actually reviewed the Gibson variant on this. I did not do the 50 standard in a burst. I did that in the gold top with P90s. In retrospect, I probably should have done that one too because my 60s standard video, that's like 200,000 plus. Oh. Something about this one is definitely speaking to me. It's got a super glossy finish that I'm noticing. So that Epiphone logo actually appears to be a little bit nicer. Ebony fretboard here. Let's get to the reveal. Cool. Interesting. Having owned the Black Modern SG before, this finish is actually the Ebony Fade. So it's more similar to one of the high performance series that they did in 2018. They've got the same clear knobs. Man, those don't feel very good. Yeah, the setup seems about the same on this guy. It has a very loud acoustic resonance to it. But thankfully, the frets are actually okay on this one, so it really does seem to be luck of the draw to see if quality control caught high frets and fixed them or not. But, you know, now that I've been used to all those worn finishes on these Epiphone guitars, going back to this full gloss stuff, Stick City. <laughs> Well, hey, it is a beautiful guitar for the price point. I'll have to throw this one on the workbench to see if it's like a half and half like the modern SG was, or if it's more of just a flame maple veneer or a thinner cap than the other ones. But the specs on this thing are pretty awesome. You even get the locking Grover tuners. Our next one here. Let's see what else we can get. It's kind of at the point where I really, really do not know what's in these boxes until I see the label on the top of them. Just a fun fact, those Epiphone boxes, they are actually a double wall box, so it's essentially quadruple boxed. They definitely do not want these things damaged in transit. But this one seems to have a little bit less padding in it, so I wonder if that means it is a lower end guitar. 
I didn't quite catch the tag on this one. What is in here? It looks like an SG. Oh, okay. I know what this is. This is the Vibrola. Wow, that thing looks strange. This is another one that people wanted me to check out that I've also done the review of the Gibson variant of it. I did not give a very raving review of the Gibson iteration. And it was mainly because I couldn't keep the vibrato arm in tune. This one also has that nice little gloss finish. The neck of this feels a lot better. It's not quite as sticky as that other one, but it's still a full gloss finish. I like that thin neck better on this too. But now for the real reveal. Maybe, there we go. <laughs> Whoa, I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Okay, that's a little bit strange. So people have been telling me that Epiphone does this. They put like a thin veneer over the top of the guitar to hide how many pieces it is. But that looks really corny. <laughs> when they only do it for the flat top part and they don't do it for the beveled edges. It's an acquired taste. It definitely is interesting to say the least, but I'm digging that it says Epiphone on it. So we'll have to see what I can do to make this thing stay in tune better because this does not have locking tuners, which would have been a nice thing. Uh, some roller saddles I've heard can help. But the vibrato arm's a little bit weird too. I remember the Gibson version doing that. Let's check these frets. Yeah, this one's got some high frets and it looks like we got some shipping damage here. Um, the nut has kind of cracked the finish right there a little bit because of the full gloss. Yeah, this one's probably gonna have to go back. Yeah, it's on both sides. So that likely means it met some light trauma. And the other thing that's not really acceptable, look at that bad stain job. So like half of it's red, then the other half's not quite as red. Man, the QC is all over the place here. But this does seem to be built very similar to the uh, last SG we did. And hey, they did in fact do the back. I mean, these veneers look cool. It just looks goofy as heck on the sides. Oh. Man, I'll be kind of honest. All this Epiphone stuff, I was really looking forward to reviewing these, but now that I've seen a couple of these in the flesh, and I hate being a Debbie Downer, but I'm not all that impressed. But at the same time, you got to remember the price point that these guitars are at. I mean, the most expensive ones are about 500 bucks. And in the Gibson world, that doesn't even get you in the door for a brand new one. Even on the used market, you're picking it be slim. So a brand new guitar at these prices, I get it, it's difficult, but when I can buy a Glary for 70 bucks and it shows up and has, you know, decent fret work, I mean, I'm not going to say that they're perfect all the time either, but, but $70 versus even the low end 379 ones, and they're both made in China. I don't think I'll be getting my Epiphone sponsorship. <laughs> But that's okay. That's why I launched the new Guitar Day program. It helps me do independent reviews and also helps you guys get slightly better deals all while supporting independent reviews. So what is in the last one for today? Let's find out. Oh, I didn't even know I bought this one. <laughs> It's the uh, other SG, so I guess we will get a review of all the modern... Well, I guess this one's actually from the original collection. Scratch that thought. <laughs> so I reviewed the 2019 version of this guitar, but it was the actual 2019 version, not the new 2019, so it kind of had the old specs. 
Finally, I, I could be happy about one of these purchases. This Pelham Blue finish, it's not the same as the Gibson one. It's almost slightly more metallic and more of a darker hue. I'm really digging that. You don't have any strange veneers over the top. This is definitely going to be one of their top sellers. I can just see it just by looking at this. The finish is also glossy, but it's not sticky. Well, it's not too bad. And thankfully, uh, no finish damage here, so we're all good and set there. Looks like this is also a late 2019 model. But yeah, I'm impressed with this one. I'm looking forward to reviewing this, but please, please let there be no high frets. Oh, finally! Finally, we found one, guys! This one's a keeper. That neck needs a little bit of straightening, but I did not find any high frets. It's beautiful. I do not see any finish flaws. So I think if you learn nothing else from this video, go to the store to purchase one of these is I think your best bet because the QC just appears to be all over the place. I'll probably make this one an earlier review because I want to be happy about these purchases. <laughs> So thank you Trogle Dice for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed getting to see my first impressions on these Epiphones and you can look forward to seeing the full reviews and demos to learn a little bit more about each and every single one of these as well as hear them in a playing demo segment. And if you are interested in purchasing a brand new guitar and would like for me to independently review it first and save you a little bit of money, it's not tons, but it's enough to save you the sales tax and usually a little bit more, but it all depends on the value of the guitar. On these Epiphones, I usually can't help you too much, but if you're looking at a custom shop Gibson, custom shop Fender, that's when, you know, I can save you a little bit more dough. So we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.